Let's talk some sports, baby. better than today and make today better than yesterday and you know what we gonna do we gonna holler at you until next time baby. welcome to a drink of wisdom with jay wise and nathan drinkard i'm your host cody ward thank you for spending some of your time with us tonight and as a reminder to all our listeners besides being on all your favorite podcast platforms a drink of wisdom is also on youtube with each show segment available head on over and if you like what you hear we would appreciate your subscription What's going on, guys? Uh, welcome back from the holidays. Hope you had a Merry Christmas. I know I did. Um, got a nice Christmas present. We'll talk about it later. Yeah, 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 yeah. No problem. Yeah, but hope this. I, I just want to echo what he said. I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas um, or whatever, whatever else everybody celebrates. Um, but yeah, good to be back and a lot of good stuff to get into. Yeah, you know what it is. Um, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, all that good stuff. You know what it is. It's the holiday season. Pull up a seat. You know, we got we got to speak, you know what I'm saying? Hey, and listen, we see what they don't and say what they want. Let's talk some sports, baby. Let's roll, baby. It just gets better with drink on these. I like it. In episode 24, we discussed the NFL Pro Bowl selections, the Trevor Lawrence sweepstakes, which has come to a close. And, you know, we got to fill you in on the college football playoff. We're going to go ahead and start tonight with the uh, NFL sort of playoff picture. It's coming down to the wire. We're in week 17. And there are some pretty interesting scenarios in both the AFC and the NFC. And we're going to go ahead and begin tonight with the AFC. Uh, the quick broad picture, of course, is the Kansas City Chiefs. They have the number one spot locked up. They're going to get their first round by. And as a quick reminder, we are doing the seven-team playoff format this year. So there's an extra wild card. And your second team that would normally have a bye, your second overall seed, does have to play the first weekend. So a little bit different this year in case you forgot because that was like 400 years ago when they changed it. Uh, anyway, so we have pretty much five teams vying for four spots, and they're all good. I mean, we're all talking about 10-plus win teams here, and one of them is getting left out in the cold. So, Jay, we'll go ahead and start with you. Um, it's a surprising stark contrast in the NFC. Uh, what do you think about the AFC playoff picture? I don't I – don't, first of all, I, I don't know how good Cleveland is. I, I really don't. But, no, no, just to – I think it, it's it's real interesting. And, we'll, of course, we'll get to the NFC um, briefly – can you can you imagine though there could be an eleven and five uh, team that could possibly get left out of this of the AFC playoff picture? That's that's almost unthinkable, especially considering this the NFL went with an expanded playoff format this year. We also thought um, I think I think we kind of believed that there would be a little bit less resting of players in the in week seventeen due to there only being one bye. Um, well, Kansas City, they kind of took care of that. They just ran away from the rest of the league, and that they, they get to rest players. We, uh, we've already got the Steelers. They, I think Big Ben's going to sit out week 17 um, against Cleveland. So, surely, I don't care uh, if they got zero wide receivers or not, surely Cleveland um, can beat the Mason Rudolphs of the world. I'm sure Miles Garrett will have a little bit to say to him when he gets back there. We, we know how that will work. God, I was um, but I think, I mean, you think with with all that in mind, if, if Pittsburgh is going to rest Big Ben, I mean, Buffalo could look at, they could rest some guys um, or maybe they'll play it out. We'll see. But I think, uh, I think the most interesting thing here is I think Miami's in probably, and it, it's almost, I think it's a little bit crazy to, to think of it this way because they're in the five slot right now, but they could be in the most danger if Buffalo is going to play at full strength. Because when you look below them, I mean, Baltimore's got Cincinnati, and Cincinnati's um, they, they've been a, a bit better recently. Um, but you got to believe that Lamar Jackson and company, they go in and take care of business in that game. Uh, I just told you about Cleveland and Pittsburgh. If Big Ben doesn't play, I don't think Pittsburgh's going to be able to, uh, to, to win that game. And then Indianapolis and Jacksonville, I mean, I, mean, I, I guess Jacksonville, Jacksonville's one win on the season is against Indianapolis. And they've already locked up the number one overall pick. So I guess, I don't know, maybe they'll come out there and try to win the game. Um, so, but I think, but I think, um, you know, with all that in mind, Miami to me, they, they've got the toughest week 17 matchup, assuming, you know, how Sean McDermott wants to play it. Um, 
but I think, and, and of course, Tennessee, you got to throw them in there. You know, they get Houston. Houston has struggled uh, mightily most of the year, particularly on defense. They, they just let Brandon Allen chew them up for over 350 passing yards. Uh, but then you look, some of the pretend, you know, the playoff matchups that we have right now in the wild card round. Um, and you are right. I, you know, I, I joke about Cleveland, but all these teams, you know, with all these teams having a chance to go 11 and five, there, there's, there's some really good solid teams. Um, and we're going to, we're going to have some good matchups. Uh, Buffalo, Cleveland. I don't know how much I really like that one. Josh Allen and Baker Mayfield doesn't really new, move the needle for me, but you know, you know, I can get down on Pittsburgh and Baltimore, a third installment of that rivalry. Uh, Big Ben, Lamar Jackson, Mike Tom and John Harbaugh. I don't think it gets much better than that. And then ten- Tennessee and Miami, the, the, the return of Ryan Tannehill for um, meeting up with his former team. Uh, what's Miami going to do? Are they going to stick with, uh, with Tua Tagovailoa? Are we, we going to see Ryan Fitzpatrick um, do some things? I, I don't think we know the answer to that yet. Uh, but a, a, lot, a lot to be decided. It's, it's been a real competitive uh, year in the AFC. Um, it, it's, it, it, it is truly unthinkable that – we have the possibility an 11 and five cold scene could be left out. Well, <clears throat> well, let me start right there. Um, here's the deal, fellas. They playing some ball in the AFC, as you can see. I'm looking at this, like Jay said, Kansas City 14 and one, why not? Um, I think more people could have seen that happen than not. I mean, they brought back the whole team. So we that was probably copy and paste for them. Um, Buffalo. Listen, Buffalo having a good season. I'm going to move past because every time I start gassing up Buffalo, let me get 15 on pump five, and here comes the ball still flying over the referee head. So, you know, you know, Buffalo, it is what it is. The Steelers, hey, the Steelers are very interesting. Um, they, they holding on to that three seed in front of the looks of it. It looks like they got a good chance to hold on to that. I don't know what's going on with this hot and cold team. You just never know what you're going to get now. One, I mean, just three, four weeks ago, they looked like the best team in the NFL and won close. And now we are here like they could lose the, the, the Cleveland. So, I mean, you just – you don't know what you're going to get out of that team. So, that should be interesting. Tennessee, listen, I wanted to talk about this game, uh, the, the game they played the other night. This team don't know what to do if Derrick Henry can't run the ball. They don't know what to do. I seen some dude about to hit the big red button over behind because he didn't know what to do. It said break in case of emergency. And my man had, he was ready to break. Cause he's like, oh, we can't run here. What do we do here? What do we do here? How about you throw the ball to AJ Brown or something? I don't know, but like, listen, you're not gonna be able to run them every game. What are we doing here? Either way, team was a little lost in the South. And then when, when we talk about teams five through seven, I just want to say this. Welcome to the party, Miami. Welcome to the party, Cleveland. A little, hey, you know what I'm saying? Listen, y'all seem to be looking like y'all benefiting from the extra playoff spot and a coach, a coaching change here, a coaching change there. You know, welcome to the party, Miami. I, I you know, Miami, and Cleveland. We get to see some new blood in the playoffs. I don't think you're gonna do much, but we get to see some new blood in the playoffs. So, you know, for what it's worth, welcome. You know, and um, number six, we got Baltimore. So I guess I got a question. I got a question for you, Jay. Baltimore seemed to have switched back to the old Raven scheme that got them success last year. They stopped dropping back Lamar Jackson so much um, because that seemed like it stymied the Ravens offense for a little while. With that said, with them going back, do you see, do you see any different results? for the Ravens this year than we've seen in the past two years in the postseason? I think, I think we've, I think we'll see a different result. I, I think we'll, that's, that's hard to, it's hard to say though. I think there, I think, you know, we expected Baltimore to kind of maybe be the same team they were last year, be 14 and two or get a little, or even be better because they brought everybody back and they, they made some, uh, they made some good moves. They brought in Calais Campbell. They brought in Derek Wolf. It looked like they got better. I think the the, the injury to Ronnie Stanley uh, really hurt them. Um, so the the one thing I think that that helps them is Baltimore. Pretty much the entire second half of the season, I believe that they flown they flown under the radar. I think expectations for them are kind of a little bit low um, at this point. Um, but 
I think I think that that might help them a little bit. And I do I do think going back to you know what was you know kind of their bread and butter running the football and using Lamar Jackson's legs um, just as much as they use his arm. I think that'll benefit them. And maybe, um, you know, maybe for whatever reason, Lamar Jackson, he's not going to, you know, maybe develop into that a, a prolific passer from the pocket. That that might just not be um, something he's really going to be able to do at a, a Patrick Mahomes type level. So I think, and, and then of course, if they get Pittsburgh, that's going to be an interesting matchup because Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh hasn't been, you know, the 11 and 0 team that they started off, you know, they're, they're kind of on a decline they can't run the football. And if Pittsburgh comes out and plays Baltimore in a wild card round, uh, I don't think, I don't know if a one dimensional Pittsburgh t- uh, team is going to have a lot of success against Baltimore. Okay. I was just curious because I've seen them revert and then it's like, this didn't work in the last two years, but it worked so well in the regular season. It's like, I don't know, maybe they could tweak some and get a, get a dub or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but we'll see. Um, and then you got Cleveland at seven. I already said it. Listen, Cleveland run the ball. And then at eight, we got we got the Indianapolis Colts. Here's the deal. Um, I was just reading the article. The Colts have uh, sent a memo to Roger Goodell, and they asked if they can replace one of the NFC teams so they can get a playoff spot. Uh, <laughs> at least we know if they was in that division, they'd have a winning record. Either way, you know, I I, I like the that they added the playoff spot. Um, the, the, the AFC looks like it's going to be – competitive as all get out. Um, I can't wait to see it. When you look at these records, they ain't playing no games. And once we start talking about the NFC, you'll see exactly what I mean by that. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I like the matchups. We still got another week to go before they, they're finalized. But, hey, let's roll, baby. Yeah, a couple quick thoughts. You know, I look at Tennessee and Indianapolis sitting here both at uh, 10 and 5 in the AFC South, and it's it's striking to me that one of these teams may be on their couch for the playoffs. And I, you, just, you look at the expectations that both had. You know, Tennessee had signed all these guys. They paid all this money to Tannehill and Henry, and, you know, they're coming off an AFC championship kind of run. And the Colts, you know, they got great play out of Phillip Rivers this year, DeForest Buckner trade. I mean, they, they've drafted really well the last couple of years. Both teams really had high, high expectations, and – despite hitting the expect, like if you just said at the beginning of the season, hey, 11 and five, how does that sound? They'd be like, yeah, you know, and then one could potentially, you know, even 10 and six, you, you could still be at home. It's it's baffling to me. Um, I, but when I look at all these teams, the only team that looks like to me, they could really challenge Kansas City is probably Buffalo. And I think that if, if we get the Josh Allen that we've had this whole season, I guess Pittsburgh can too. I guess if we get the actual Steelers that we thought, you know, we had at 11 and 0, maybe they can too. I, I think you'd never want to discount guys like Tomlin and Big Ben. But Buffalo, man, Josh Allen's had an MVP season. I mean, I you won't gas him up. I will real quick. He's had an MVP level season. If you look at him versus Patrick Mahomes, it's it's if I if I labeled him player A and player B and took their, their names away, you'd have a hard time. You would be like, uh, well, he, you know, it, it's – but I want to see it in the playoffs because we haven't seen it in the playoffs. In the playoffs, we get him ladder on the ball to refs and, you know, all the other nonsense. So, like – if we get no nonsense, Josh Allen, man, the bills are really good. And uh, yeah, the final thought I had was uh, like, you guys already said, what, what is Miami going to do in the playoffs? Are we going to get Tua for a quarter and then Ryan Fitzpatrick should come in for relief? Like what th- this dance they're doing has been cute, but you're in the playoffs, man. It's a different world. I mean, do you go with the vet? Do you try to win games? Do you let the rookie just get his air out of socks in the playoffs for the first time. I don't know how they're going to approach it. But it's going to be interesting to see. All right, let's go ahead and move over to the NFC. Uh, this one's a bit more of a um, dumpster fire in terms of uh, teams that could still get in. Um, we, we got Green Bay, New Orleans, and Seattle all could still get the first round by. And then we've got uh, Tampa Bay as the only wild card team, and there are like five other teams that could get in the wild card um, deal. So go ahead and break it down for us, Jay. What do you see in the NFC? Greg, you want to start this one? Yeah, I can. Look, here's the deal. So – over here in the NFC, right, they like, to, they like to pack it in. And I ain't talking about the Green Bay Packers. I'm just talking about how tight it is over here. Take that for what it's worth. Pause. So, listen, we got Green Bay up here at, you know, 12 and 3. You know, right now they're in the first, you know, first seed right now. But then you got New Orleans and Seattle that's right on their hip, right? So they, they right close. And I like that. So that part, I'm like, okay, I like the, the competitiveness at the top. You know, one team ain't already clinched in and the rest of them like, oh, man, we got to play on opening weekend. So, so I like that. But then you get to number four. <laughs> listen, listen. 
if so they this team couldn't even come up with a nickname, right? Couldn't come up with a nickname. But somehow they got Ron Rivera in their lap and and these awesome defensive pieces that's good enough to roll out a guy that almost got his leg amputated like just last year and win enough games to get a home playoff game, which let's be real here, home playoff games don't matter as much this year because a lot of, you know, arenas are empty. But yet and still, this is some outrageous stuff. And I like the LOL. So then we come down here, number five, we got the GOAT. I hope this last year, but this we got to go to Tampa Bay, ten and five, and then we got the loss. See what I'm? Look at the Rams. Look at look at your Rams. The Rams been eating their Wheaties. They've been eating their Wheaties. They're looking. You know what I'm saying? We had them dead. We maybe we should have had them walking dead, but we had them just dead. They still alive. They still doing something. You know what I'm saying? And then you got the Chicago Bears at eight and seven. When did you watch this? Give me this. What game did you watch when you watched the Chicago Bears and you like, that's a playoff team? They've scored 30 oh, plus in like four straight games. I'll say that. I mean, the offense is starting to actually look like they might be able to score it every now and then. Just saying, like, but, you know. All right. We're not buying. <laughs> so, I, I, I ain't saying that they're great, but they've been a little right. better if you had not been watching them too close. They've been a little better. Okay. Reporting live so, from Devil's Island, Devil's Advocate Island down there. They passed through this week for, you know, five minutes. So, <laughs> so Arizona, we got Arizona coming in at the AC 87. So, my, my point was, like, when you looked at the AFC, you like, oh, man, they playing ball, a bunch of double-digit teams. And then we got the Colts that could possibly go 11-5 and five and miss the playoffs. But we got Washington that's guaranteed not to go 500 that's going to be in the playoffs. And then – we got Chicago over here that could possibly go 500 and maybe get in, depending on what Arizona do behind them. Like, Arizona could possibly be, I don't know, maybe 500 and get in. That is crazy. When you look at that, I mean, it's almost like the Western Conference versus the Eastern Conference in, in the NBA almost. Like, hey, you could slide around in the back end and go and slide on in there. But all in all, when I look at the matchup, I think I'm – Green Bay, y'all already know. Uh, until I see them play a team that dominate the trenches and they look like they know what's going on, I, I'm not sold. I'm just not sold on Green Bay. New Orleans, I like New Orleans, but they just got too much going on. Michael Thomas, he's in and out. Drew Brees, I mean, don't get me wrong, he's still he's playing better than most quarterbacks, but I don't know if it's enough to get you to the Super Bowl. I'm sorry, defense looking good, not really sold on the offense totally. Alvin Kamara, I'm sold on. But the rest of it, I don't know if you can get it to come together during this playoff run. Seattle was my team. They, they was my before the season pick. I think their defense is playing a little better, but I'm not like in love with them. So those three teams, I don't I don't get a, a Kansas City feel. I don't get a Buffalo feel with those three teams. They're good, but I don't know if they're good enough to be holding up the Lombardi at the end of the year. We'll see. I don't know. And then, like I said, Washington, Tampa Bay, Los Angeles, Chicago. Man, get out of here. I ain't, I ain't wasting no time with them for. So, all in all, the NFC is close, but the AFC look like whatever team come out the AFC, that's probably going to be my Super Bowl winner. <laughs> NFC over here. Well, the top four in the NFC. They over here doing their best college football playoff impersonation. What do I mean by that? Well, we got Green Bay, New Orleans, and Seattle. That, look, they, they're your top three. They definitely stand out, you know, above the rest. Whatever the four C winds up being, they got a little Notre Dame feel to them, and probably they worse than that. You're just not buying, you know, I, I got I got so much love for Ron R Rivera, and I think he's done a great job, you know, just mixing and matching, you know, three, four, I don't know, maybe even five quarterbacks that he's, you know, put on the uh, field this year. And I, I hope they beat Philadelphia and they clinch that final playoff spot. I don't think I can stomach six and 10 football teams going to the playoffs. I don't need, I mean, we got people, we got pro football talk, you know, over here talking about, um, Oh, you know, what's going to be real interesting. You know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the New York giants. Yeah. The six and 10 New York giants against the Tom Brady led Buccaneers. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's really what we don't want to, we don't want to see that. 
we don't need that. But I do think I do think the uh, when you go down, when you look at the top three teams, and I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree just slightly. I get where Drink's coming from in terms of the Packers, and um, you know I think all of our you know sh- uh, our reservations about them. Um, when you talk about a team that you know dominates the line of scrimmage, I, I don't think that I think Tennessee would be one of those teams that comes to mind immediately. And they, uh, the Green Bay was tremendous against Tennessee on Sunday night. They, they not, whooped them. Not, not, oh, not on the defense side. If you want to give me the offense side because they run the ball well with Henry, yes. That pat, that defense, Tennessee defensive line has been stinking up the joint this year. Okay, okay. That, well, that was that was my my biggest fear about Green Bay was their ability to defend the run. And I think you know when when you're playing Tennessee, I think your first priority should be able to sell out against Derrick Henry. And that, but that's what most teams do anyway. And something yeah. uh, more often than not, they still can't get it done. You, yeah. you are absolutely right about Tennessee's defense. You know they not you know, if Gr- Green Bay's offense doing whatever they feel like against that defense. That I don't think that should be um, any surprise, uh, much surprise to anyone. But I do think that you got to be encouraged if you're a, a Green Bay Packer fan. If you can come out on the field. Um, in, in those conditions and, and, and slow down Derek Henry to that, uh, to that extent, that, that's got to give you some confidence. But, of course, I, I still think New Orleans is still the best team in, in the NFC, even though, you know, we still got, we got questions about Drew Brees. We got questions about his arm strength. Um, we don't know what raw receivers are on the field week to week. We don't know where Michael Thomas is. Um, we don't uh, – Traquan Smith's been out. Emmanuel Sanders, he's been doing some things here recently. Um, Jared Cook, he's good. He's good up the seams every now and then. Uh, but, of course, uh, you know, the Saints are almost a little bit of a throwback team now. They run the football and they play defense. Uh, Alvin Kamara, you know, he's, he's the jack of all trades. You know, he runs the football inside, outside. He catches passes. Latavius Murray, he's a sledgehammer. He, he runs in between the tackles for you. And then their, de- their defense has been tremendous. I mean, you got, this, you got this guy, Trey Hendrickson, leading the NFC in sacks at 12 and a half. Of course, you know about Cameron Jordan. Marcus Davenport, and then Demario Davis has been an absolute stud at linebacker for them. And that secondary is, is tremendous. And one of the things you got to, if we look down the line and we think about maybe a Saints-Packers matchup, you know, first and foremost, when you talk about Green Bay, you, you talk about Devontae Adams. And I think the New Orleans Saints with Marshawn Lattimore, you know, that could be a really interesting matchup um, in, in, a, in a, uh, a potential game like that. Um, and then, of course, Janoris Jenkins and Malcolm Jenkins, you know, that – Dennis Allen, he's got a lot to work with on that defense. And then Seattle, Seattle, you know, Seattle's probably got, I can't say the best quarterback because Aaron Rodgers is playing absolutely out of his mind. Um, But Russell Wilson, first half of the year, he looked like the MVP candidate. He's fallen off in recent weeks, but we still know what the combination of him and Pete Carroll are capable of doing. He's got two great weapons out there with Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. And uh, the, that defense, you know, it's it's looked a little bit better recently. I mean, Jamal Adams, Quandre Diggs, you know, they're flying around in the defensive backfield. And well, Jamal, well, Diggs is. Jamal Adams is flying around at the line of scrimmage looking like um, the second coming of Khalil Mack getting 10 sacks. And then, uh, but when, when you go on down the line, you know, you know how I feel about the NFC East. It's not good. No, we don't want to, we don't really, I could, I could deal with seeing Washington. I think that'd be a nice story, especially with Ron Rivera. I don't want to see Dallas. I don't want to see the Giants. Um, and, and of course, after Tampa Bay, and even even with Tampa Bay, you know, I think they stand out, you know, well above the rest of these teams, kind of in the wild card mix. But I mean, there have been a lot. There have been, you know, you look at their losses; they got some bad losses. I mean, really, um, really, the Green Bay game is really the only game that kind of I think stands out to you that to really, oh yeah, they they look for real. New Orleans has beat them up twice, and there's some other losses that really make you scratch your head and you know wonder how real are they. But of course, um, the the Rams. I'm not buying the Rams. The Rams. The Rams had the benefit of going four and zero against the NFC. So even if they win this game against Arizona, they're a 500 team, and they're not going to have Jared Goff for this game. So there, we have the pleasure of watching somebody named John Walford, who his most recent time throwing footballs was for the get this Arizona Hot Shots in the Amer the AF. Well, I forget what it, the American Alliance football thing. Yeah. Or something that happened a couple of years ago. Cool, so that's what you get on the. Don't be disrespectful. This... It's called AAF, man. Don't be disrespectful. What? Yeah, the F. The AAF. Hey, no, yeah. I, yo, no, I don't want to hear that, that. No, actually, I want to stop you to ask you a question. So, can you explain what you just said about um, the Rams being five hundred? What you, What did you just say? So the the Rams had the benefit of playing the NFC East, four free wins. 
So if they win this, even if they win this game against Arizona, I look at them as a 500 football team. Just subtract them gotcha. four wins. Gotcha. So that's, that's, that's what I look at. And of course, with, look, with John Walford, that's a real possibility they could lose that game. So Arizona could be Arizona could get in. Arizona's tailed off in recent weeks. They don't look they don't look the same as they did earlier this season. And yeah, ain't no, yeah, you know, I'm not buying Chicago. Get out of here with that. No, they signed my man Blake too. So if, if Walford can't get it done, they got the proven guy. But they still got know. they still got Ooh. Bryce Perkins. I'd rather see him. No, you know, I was buying yeah. I was buying the Rams until they decided to go lose to the Jets two weeks ago. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. That that really. That. I mean, because if you look at the Rams, you know they do have the NFC East, sure, but they also beat the Seahawks and the Bucks back to back weeks. You know that that's nothing. That's not something to just cough at. You know, I mean. Can I just but, throw this in there about the Rams real quick, Jared Goff? You throw it in there. I know he's been. You know, we think he he hasn't been Carson Wentz bad, so that's kind of you know taking some of the 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 inverse limelight off of him. But since the start of 2019, he's got the most turnovers in the NFL at 39. James Winston is right behind him. He hasn't played all year, so that's a fun fact. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, th- th- we talk a lot about the playoffs. We talk about momentum, and there are teams that carry momentum into the playoffs and can make runs. Well, the Rams are doing the opposite. Their era was down. It's been down. They lost the last two, and you lost to the Jets, man. Come on. So, um, I'm not buying them. Uh, the Seahawks, no. Y'all, y'all talked about the Seahawks defense. They're giving up 13.7 points per game since week 11. They've been the best defense in the league because they found a pass rush, and it wasn't just Jamal Adams. They found something besides blitzing the strong safety to get a pass rush, and lo and behold, suddenly the defense looks good it's weird how those things work uh I, I think the seahawks might be the most dangerous team like you always get the cliche that's not the team you want to play but they might be that team you know <laughs> they're, they're definitely i mean we know what green bay is going to do we know Aaron Rodgers is having an mvp season um but we've been questioning how how soft they might be and I mean, that, that tennessee game was pretty eye-opening I, I i mean that's like okay like maybe maybe we're figuring it out but um you know, and we know New Orleans and Drew Brees, and we just hope that there's not some other heartbreaking thing that happens to the Saints in the postseason again. But <laughs> who knows at this point what's going to happen to them once they get into the playoffs. Um, but, yeah, th- these teams after them, I mean, Washington, you would think, has the best chance to at least do something. They do have a defensive front. They've got a veteran quarterback. I mean, you know, if you're going to pull one of those teams out, but let's just hope Washington wins and at least gets in at 7-9. and nine. Yes. Because since 2002, since the reorg, we've had a 7-9 and nine team. We've had a 7-8-1 and one team. So it's not – unheard of if we have a six and ten team it will be literally unheard of uh, since two, since the reorganization so uh let's all kind of just pull for the football team to just get on in get the rest of the riffraff out of here because we don't need to see the cowboys in and honestly these teams like the cowboys and the giants they don't need to go to the playoffs like they literally do not need to go to the playoffs they'd be out nobody there. in that division need to go in the play that's the whole point no no whole division do. need to be out but, here but well, I, if you had to take one you would want washington i think that's the idea right. but, when you have when you have washington Ron Rivera, and then Alex Smith, I, I, that, at least, that at least you could like kind of sell me on that. And oh, by the way, Washington, Tampa Bay, that's that's intriguing because you got statue S Tom Brady out there in the verticals offense. That that Washington defensive line could give them real problems. Yeah, give mean, them real problems. And plus Alex Smith, Ron Rivera, veteran head coach, veteran quarterback, both of them got a wealth of playoff experience. I think Washington could make that a game. They could. And the, these other teams, they need to look at Philadelphia as a cautionary tale because, you get if you make the playoffs with that record, you jump ahead or jump behind all the other teams in between you in the draft. And it masks a lot of problems. You keep coaches that maybe shouldn't be there and, and, and things don't go like Philadelphia did the last two years. They made the playoffs and they probably shouldn't have. And it kind of like let them limp along. And then all of a sudden, all the cracks showed at one time, you know, so maybe. Wait, they hold, just, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Coach, know how, or you said. Are you saying the Eagles should get rid of Doug Peterson? Is that oh, what I'm hearing oh over here? Oh, I mean, I, I, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a can of worms for another day. This segment's already a little too long. But Philly I'm special? I'm just, get saying, rid of- I'm just saying, sometimes it's not always good to make the playoffs, at least when you're 6-10. <laughs> and 10. And the final thing I'll leave you with is uh, – kind of got alluded to just now uh tampa bay might want to go ahead and win this weekend because that's the difference in going to play washington or having to travel to seattle new orleans or green bay however that shakes out so um well i don't think uh, even if they lose the Ram- i think the rams are going to lose so i think they're going to be the well, five regardless probably but if the rams would win tampa was to lose yeah then the, the seeds would switch five and six yeah right 